so hello hello <laughs> um, my name is Radu Koravo and uh, I've been working for Oxygen XML editor for uh, a long long time I'm a software engineer um, I worked on uh, a lot on the Oxygen visual editing support uh, Dita XML editing uh, a, a bit of on the publishing side and uh, on various add-ons uh, which we implemented uh, uh, along the time. Um, as uh, I'm uh, a particularly lazy person, like probably most of my colleagues, I created a blog post with this presentation, so I didn't, I didn't want to do the same thing twice. So on, on the Oxygen XML blog, so it's blog at oxygenxml.com, uh, there is this article about the AI Positron that you can consume also later, because it's, you know, it has various useful links various things that, that you can explore on, uh, on your own. So uh, about two years ago we started being interested in using these uh, AI engines like OpenAI in order to, to provide a useful assistant for technical documentation writers. At that time uh, 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 OpenAI was, was, was on version 3 which wasn't a particularly good version. But in time it evolved to, to version 3.5 and then we started checking it again and uh, we considered that we can make an oxygen add-on which could be useful uh, for technical documentation writers, for example, to generate content, to rewrite existing content, to maybe all have an overview of content and maybe perform their research having this virtual assistant. Also, we try to integrate the uh, op, uh, AI Positron Assistant with XML-related technologies. We created some very useful uh, XSL, uh, XPath function extensions, which can be used in Schematron or XSLT style sheets in order to refactor documents or to, or to check for validation uh, using, uh, using AI. So this is mostly a, a show and tell. So I'm going to show you the, you know, the, the current support. Um, if you haven't installed our AI Positron Assistant add-on, uh, we have two flavors of add-on uh, on the desktop editing side. So um, if you go to help uh, install new add-on and uh, use the Oxygen uh, default uh, add-on update site, um, you'll find we have two flavors of Oxygen AI Positron. One is called Oxygen AI Positron Assistant and one is called Oxygen AI Positron Assistant Enterprise. And uh, the difference is that uh, the plain assistant uh, will offer you functionality, uh, AI functionalities through what we call the uh, uh, Positron platform. So um, uh, if you download and install this add-on, it installs as a side view in Oxygen. And this side view comes with uh, lots of uh, useful actions, which I will show you later on. And um, you can connect to, uh, to the platform. Let me disconnect first. So let's say I want to connect. And uh, I will have a confirmation code. And then uh, uh, I can connect either with the GitHub or Google, uh, or Google Mail. And um, I will have one month of free trial. So I install the add-on. I have one month of free trial on the platform. If I want, I can see how my account looks like on the platform. So um, this is based on a subscription plan. Um, first, I have the three, uh, the three months of trial, and then I can, uh, if I like the add-on and I consider it useful, I can buy maybe a subscription license uh, and um, have it, uh, you know, uh, pay for that uh, each each month. Um, so uh, you know, I log in and then I use the actions. Uh, as preferences, I can um, uh, choose what uh, model of the AI to use. And uh, by default, it's GPT 3.5 Turbo. But I can also switch to a more advanced model if uh, I want something smarter from the AI engine. Maybe I try an action and the AI engine doesn't seem to, you know, to obey my commands. So I can switch to a smarter model, which consumes more credits from, uh, from my account. So this is the AI Positron subscription model. And uh, the other uh, add-on is, uh, let me see, 
uh, DA Positron Assistant Enterprise add-on. So once I install this add-on, uh, I can choose to what AI engine I want to, to connect. So I go to preferences and I, I can choose maybe to use uh, Anthropic Cloud or use uh, an open AI uh, engine hosted on Microsoft Azure or use uh, uh, open AI with my own account and my own API key. Uh, if I'm using uh, an enterprise version of Oxygen, and in my case I have category enterprise here in, in my license key, this means that the add-on will work without you know, paying for anything extra. So I connect th this kind of add-on with my own engine, and this is useful for companies which already have their own AI engine or uh, have uh, you know, various kind of security limitations they want uh, to control, to better control to what uh, AI engine the, um, the add-on connects. So once the, uh, you know, once the end user uh, decides to use uh, a connector like Anthropic Cloud or OpenAI, they uh, enter their API key and uh, nothing from the conversation reaches the Oxygen XML website in any way. So it's just a conversation between the add-on and, uh, and the engine. Uh, we also have an Oxygen XML web author, which is an in-browser editing tool. And similarly with what we had uh, developed for the desktop, um, uh, we have an Oxygen Content Fusion platform in which people can edit content directly in a web browser. And we added this side view here called AI Positron Assistant. It's a separate plugin. It has about the same functionality as uh, as the Oxygen desktop has. So uh, functionality to invoke actions and uh, to, to discuss with the AI. Uh, also the Oxygen web author, uh, even when used plain in an implementation, uh, again it has the AI Positron Assistant. It, uh, it can have, it, you can install in it an uh, AI Positron Assistant plugin. And uh, we are working to offer the plug this plugin uh, also in two flavors, one in which you are using our platform, uh, our uh, a, uh, you know, a platform which connects to, to OpenAI, or, and one uh, as, uh, as I showed here in which uh, the, uh, the um, uh, administrator of the web author server um, can uh, uh, configure to what specific AI engine the, the add-on connects. Um, moving on, um, so as you saw, um, the AI engine contributes this side view, and uh, in this side view you have multiple possibilities to, to discuss with the engine. One possibility is to invoke actions, and um, let's say I have a data XML topic, either open in, in the text mode or uh, in the author mode. And uh, I can invoke, for example, the action to insert a short description. And uh, the add-on uh, 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 discusses this with the AI engine. It sends a prompt. The engine uh, will send me a generated short description back. And here I have the possibility to either copy the response and insert it separately. I can preview. The, the response visually and see how it would be inserted in, um, in, uh, in my topic. Or I can click insert and uh, have it inserted directly inside the topic. Uh, so why, uh, after I invoke actions, why uh, does the add-on allow me to, to discuss further with the AI engine? The AI engine may not produce exactly what I want. Maybe I produce, in this case, I produce quite a, a long short description. Maybe I can ask the engine to you know, make it shorter. So uh, this is like a conversation that I have with the engine. I can uh, ask it to, you know, to uh, rewrite the content in various ways. And uh, the AI engine will, uh, will try to, you know, to, to obey this specification and then uh, when I'm happy I can insert the, the content in, uh, in the data XML topic. So uh, 
what else can I do? Um, I can take, for example, um, oh, I can start discussions from zero with the AI engine. Maybe I can ask it, uh, you know, like, should I use a press or click when uh, documenting buttons, you know? So um, I have this possibility with, uh, no, uh, discussing with the engine various ways in which uh, I should write the content. And uh, I have this, um, you know, this thread, this discussion thread in which I, I can uh, discuss further with the engine and at some point I can use the information coming from the engine to, you know, to, to write my, my own content. Uh, what other features do I have? I have a history list here where I can see previous discussions I had with the engine. Uh, uh, here are my actions, if I want to invoke an action which is uh, predefined. Um, what else? I can create favorite actions. Like for example, um, I can uh, create an, uh, uh, a favorite prompt called uh, improve, uh, 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 like uh, fix grammar problems. Uh, in this data XML content. And uh, then I can uh, give it uh, editor variables and I give it the selection editor variable. And then I, I create a, prom uh, a, a favorite for it, like uh, fix grammar problems. And uh, now I can use this favorite whenever I want to, uh, no, to to add or uh, no, to 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 use this uh, this specific prompt. Uh, let me find for you know for uh, correcting grammar. So in this case, uh, I can select an, a paragraph and then I can run fix grammar problems in this data XML content. I can send the content and you see that it got expanded. So the selection got expanded and the AI engine will give me, um, you know, <laughs> it will give me some, you know, the, the way in which uh, the content was corrected. Like you can configure, it was replaced with, you can configure. Sometimes the engine may generate some extra content. And in such cases, you can ignore the extra content or uh, fine tune your prompts in order to, for the engine, you know, like, uh, to ask the engine not to, to repeat the, you know, the, no, the prompt in, in its answer. Uh, what else does uh, the, uh, the add-on contribute to Oxygen? So we talked about the chat view and I showed you how it works, the history, the favorites. Um, you can insert editor variables like uh, I showed you with the, with the selection editor variable. Uh, and the document editor variable, if you want to insert, uh, to, you know, to expand the entire document in, uh, in the prompt. You can also um, give it images, like uh, explain this image. And uh, I can give it uh, a reference to an image. I'm not sure what I'm choosing <laughs> right now, so let's see. And uh, the AI Positron will uh, use the, the visual. You know, this image seems to be a snapshot of uh, how I bought the, the online tickets to, <laughs> to XML Prog or something. So um, uh, the AI engine has visual capabilities, so I can give it a images and it understands what's inside the images. And you will say later on what actions we created along this, this feature. Because sometimes technical documentation writers may receive screenshots from the application. So they receive these screenshots and then they, they need to write the content which matches the, the screenshot in a way. So the AI engine can, can translate the screenshot to, to a textual description. Uh, so what, what else that it con does it contribute? It contributes uh, an AI main menu with the actions. Uh, it contributes, um, if you want to select content and right click, again you will have an AI Positron Assistant uh, menu. Uh, it contributes uh, the preferences page, 
that I showed you where you can uh, uh, select uh, the the uh, the server to which to connect and the default model and you can also select various other um, important details like the context um, uh, in this context field I may instruct the AI engine about the, the domain in which I'm working for example I, I may ask I may tell the engine like you are a technical writing assistant um, uh, documenting uh, how to repair wind turbines so uh, before I do any discussion with the engine I can contribute uh, some relevant text in this context preferences page so that the engine understands better where I'm coming from, in what domain I'm activating as a, uh, as a technical writer or a, a, a developer. Um, the engine comes with its own default actions and I will show some of them to you. And it also comes with a, a way to specify your own custom actions so that uh, maybe your company develops some, some other actions that uh, they, they, can, uh, you know, they can instruct their, their users to, to follow. Uh, we also have some batch uh, um, conversion actions like uh, let's say I want to improve the, the grammar in a file so uh, I select this file maybe I select the entire content of the file and they, then I say uh, correct grammar and uh, it will give me suggestions for only this file but maybe I want to correct the grammar in multiple files uh, so um, we added the support in the add-on to select multiple files in a project for example and then to right click refactoring a positron refactoring and here I can select one of the predefined actions like correct grammar and preview what changes it will make in my content and then I can accept the, the previewed changes if uh, they are all right I can also give it custom instructions about how to to modify this, uh, this existing content that I have. Uh, so this is more or less what the add-on contributes to the oxygen side win window. And uh, I will take you through a little bit through the predefined custom actions. Uh, we have a GitHub project called the AI Positron Assistant Samples Playground. And here I have created various samples in order to demonstrate how various actions uh, could be useful for a technical documentation writer. So, for example, you may want to generate a new data XML topic. So, um, maybe I take a small prompt, like uh, installing an application named Emerald on Mac OS using the DMG installer. Then I can find my action to create a new data topic and uh, this is already here because I have selected it and then I generate um, a data XML topic based on this uh, small prompt and um, because I asked it to do, to do something which is quite you know, quite frequent on the internet it should, you know, it should generate quite you know, a lot of content a lot of initial content for me and as a technical documentation writer this means at that time I'm not wasting time coming up with the with the initial content sometimes you know the AI engine may break so you can uh, you can invoke it again for example in, in such cases so I can select again uh, you need to you know to keep an open mind and uh, you know to uh, to ask it again if uh, if there are connection problems or uh, problems with the engine not generating the entire content that, uh, that you're interested in. In this case, I'm using Anthropic Cloud for, uh, for the AI engine. So this new data topic action is useful for people who, you know, who try to you know, start a data topic from a small you know, set, you know, set of content. So in this case, you know, this is what it generated from only one line of text. As a technical documentation writer, I can take this content and maybe refine it further to, you know, to better suit my company and the product that I'm documenting, but at least I'm not starting from zero. <laughs> um, let me show you some other actions. 
um, generate draft topic. So um, let's say I I have I already have an image for uh, for which I I need to create a draft topic of draft documentation topic. So I have this image here that I created in the application. I give some context to the AI engine about uh, uh, we have a new action called this and that in the contextual menu of the project explorer, for example. So I give it more context than, than the actual image. And then I can uh, ask the AI engine to generate uh, the documentation draft for me. I can also give it links to some similar topics. So in this case, again, the engine will read the image, understand what's inside it, and generate a data XML topic based uh, on, on that. So um, if you're in such, you know, if you have such use cases in your company where you already have uh, a screenshot develop, you know, uh, that the engineer has taken of uh, a certain feature, um, you have some, uh, maybe some content from the engineer. This is what the AI engine generated from the image. So it referenced the image in the topic and then it described the image underneath the topic. So this is less time wasted by you in you know, just trying to look at the image and writing besides the image the same thing which exists in the image, the same information. So this is you know, why work we added the visual support to, to the add-on. This is one of the main reasons in order to, to be able to understand the images and to generate content based on those images. Uh, sometimes you may hit a writer's block, so you write a little bit of your topic and then maybe you're stuck, you do not know where to go next. So you ask the engine to continue writing for you. <laughs> and uh, what we do in this case is that we give the engine a little bit of context. So we give the engine maybe uh, this entire part so that the engine knows more about your, your current situation. So the engine generates all this stuff for me. Maybe again, uh, you know, I, I'm the human in charge. You know, it's my name on the commit, so I, I need to go through this uh, continue writing content and you know, trim it down so that uh, it's uh, it suits better my you know, my uh, my documentation. Uh, another interesting action we added. Let's say you already have a, a topic in your user's manual. So this topic is this in your user's manual and at some point somebody uh, adds a new feature in the application and updates just the image part. So the image contains more information than the topic contains. So I want to ask the AI to, test, to take the current image which is updated, it has more information, and to take the existing documentation which is now incomplete and to generate more documentation based on what extra the image adds. So I, I ask the AI to update content based on image or on images because I may have multiple images in, uh, in the topic. And uh, it should generate, you know, for example, it, uh, this one explains the topic type which is um, somewhere here, but it doesn't explain the file name prefix and suffix fields which are in my image. It doesn't explain this combo box. So the AI engine should attempt to explain these new, new features uh, based on, uh, on, the, on the visual uh, analysis on, of the image. And uh, let's, let's try it without preview. So here we go. So the AI engine added new content to my topic in order to update it based on, on, on the image content. This is again something that we consider to be useful for people writing and updating technical documentation. Uh, I showed you how to create short descriptions based on a topic by using uh, our action. The short description action also, some of our actions have settings. So you can customize it, for example, to be clear and engaging. You can say that I want only one sentence to be generated by the AI engine. 
So in this way, you can customize the action instead of having the action executed and then discussing with the AI engine about uh, making the, the content shorter or longer and, and so on. Um, let's see what, uh, what other things I prepared. Uh, oh, so correct grammar, uh, you know, so you can select content, uh, use the correct grammar functionality to, to rewrite the content and uh, uh, make the relevant changes. Uh, in this case, uh, it has, it had, you can configure instead of you can configure uh, various actions which uh, work on selection, like improve readability. Maybe you have a, quite a large paragraph which is quite hard to understand. And then you select it and say, uh, okay, let's improve its readability. And here you can say, well, let's see what I can customize for this. And then maybe I want it to be readable by a fifth grader. This is like uh, US grades. So, you know, I run this through and the AI engine should, should uh, improve a little bit the readability of the selection so that uh, uh, it's accessible to more people who maybe don't know or, uh, no, maybe they don't know English at a certain level. So um, it's good to, to, you know, to, to have to address. Um, so in this case, uh, instead of throughout, it used in this user guide, uh, step by step, it replaced with easy to follow, a screenshot with the pictures and, and so on. So it attempted to, to remove uh, uh, words like effectively and use in the best way possible. And uh, oh, so maybe this is a good way in which you can generate some content which is uh, you know, more accessible to, to people who uh, are, are not above a certain uh, uh, grade level. Uh, another oh, useful example, uh, use active voice. Yes, Davy. Three minutes. Three minutes, okay. <laughs> Which questions? Okay. So use active voice, again, you, you press the action and it converts passive voice to active voice. Um, I will leave the rest of, uh, of this for you to, to, to discover. So uh, for example, we have actions to translate content, uh, like uh, to take content from English and translate it to various languages. You can also, um, Besides the languages that we have, like English, French, German, Japanese, you can, you know, you, you can translate it maybe to, to Romanian, for example. So, um, uh, actions to create marketing posts and uh, all, all any you know, various other kinds of uh, useful actions that you can discover by looking at uh, our AI Positron Assistant Samples play Playground. Uh, let me see if I had something else to show you. So I showed you the visual image recognition. I talked about batch processing. Uh, so my suggestion to you is just write, you have the once, one month free for uh, the Positron Assistant. You can ask us questions during your evaluation and, or tell us what you would consider useful for your future work with, the, with this add-on. One thing I think is the AI fix. Mm -hmm. So we implemented it for errors. We can ask the AI engine to try to fix the problem for you. We provide the, we provide the error and the context, basically, and the, the error message sometimes helps, especially if it's a schema to schema. If the error message is embedded for a human, and the AI engine will give very good results to automatically fix the error for you. So it's like a prefix that implemented by AI. Um, and also what uh, Octavian will present uh, next. Uh, integrating uh, AI via XPath. And that brings uh, the AI functionality inside XSLP, X Query, Schema, Tron, and so on. So it's, it's, it's quite interesting that this will be covered by Pandemics. So it's also part of what Positron contributes to, to Oxygen. Uh, so, what, what are your questions for me? Um, or ideas about how to improve this, uh, this add on? <coughs> yes? Sorry, Mark, that's 
Uh, right now, no, but uh, as you can connect it to your own AI engine, maybe your engine is f already fine-tuned. Like, uh, uh, in this way, maybe I connect it to OpenAI uh, with a certain organization ID and a default model. So, maybe the company has already fine-tuned their engine. <laughs> 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 um, uh, you cannot give uh, lots of content to the AI engine uh, whenever you interact with it. So, so it needs to be trained. Was when you ask, write a short description, mm -hmm. if you give it the context of your own style guide, mm -hmm. what technical documentation or formatting can you deliver? It would know that you wanted no more than 100 characters or something, mm -hmm. or no more than 50 words. Uh, maybe you can do this here in the context window, so maybe we can give it some small instructions, keep it short, and uh, yeah. but give it the, the, the essential about your, uh, your style guide. It can be specific to a specific project, because you can switch the option to the project level, and then for different projects you have different mm -hmm. descriptions. Mm -hmm. different and um, what I wanted to ask, was it on purpose that they um, it was creating topics. Uh, because so you, you had in there instruction, right? So mm -hmm. it's only something. Yes. Why didn't it do a task mm -hmm. from the So all our actions have a lot of prompt content that you do not see. So you invoke an action, but the action maybe has 100 words in which it says, generate a data XML topic for me. Avoid uh, telling me what, no, uh, avoid going off track or something. So uh, the action has a lot of prompt and then you give it the, the small sentence at the end. But you do not see the prompt, you just invoke the action, but the action gives the AI engine a lot of you know, predefined prompt that we have for each action. Uh, this is in a way the hard part, let's say, so for each action to come up with a prompt, which uh, tries to funnel the AI engine, not to make mistakes and not to go uh, uh, off track to, to another, other parts of... Uh, yes? Uh, I have one technical question uh, for the subscription for, for the language model. Mm -hmm. um, this is an, uh, a model that it, you, this is your model and, and every customer works on your model, or this is a model that, that is private? Uh, mm -hmm. The question is uh, often in the industry, uh, the customers don't want that, that uh, uh, some code is put in, 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 in an AI. Mm -hmm. um, or can, can I can connect my own model? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, the Oxygen uh, Positron Assistant, uh, which is the non-enterprise version, connects to our AI Positron Oxygen XML platform, which connects to OpenAI. And this gives you fixed access to OpenAI. Uh, you cannot uh, uh, you know, configure it. You just go to OpenAI using its API. Uh, on the, you know, OpenAI says that they're do not using the content received for, for any learning so they have a this you know, they have a, you know, a legal document in which they say that they are not using the content to to train uh, future engines for anything or you can go pro let's say and uh, use the oxygen ai positron assistant enterprise and configure your own engine okay. uh, Claude or microsoft azure or an engine which is based on the open ai interface at some point i tried for example llama 3 from uh, from Facebook, uh, it wasn't that great. So it's a little bit uh, dumber that uh, than these uh, these other engines, these paid paid engines. Okay. Thank you. George. I just want to add one other thing. The default actions that you've seen are uh, the actions that are provided by like Positron are just uh, configuration. So you can add your own actions. Okay. We have a JSON schema and the JSON document that you can create based on that schema that basically defines uh, custom AI actions. And they can be associated with a project maybe, so you can have for that project the set of actions that you define and you control exactly what yeah. the prompts and everything. This is an example of uh, a small custom actions to re replace bold with UI control, again in data XML topics. As you can see, Mark, that this is the hidden context in a way. So uh, we tell the AI to you know, you know, stay on track and what to do and stuff like this. Uh, what are the other questions for me? Okay, thank you. And we'll be at the oxygen booth for the next days if you want to, to see the engine.